Hey everyone, it's Joe from Gadgetry Tech, and in today's video, I'm reviewing the Alta Audio Atom loudspeaker. This is an audiophile product. Naturally, you can tell by looking at it, it's a premium speaker. And for those of you new to the channel, one huge thanks for stopping by. Hopefully you enjoy this video. I cover things from gaming and peripherals all the way up to gaming headsets and then audiophile gear because it's always been a passion. I guess I'm a gamer that likes listening to music on nice stuff. So uh, with that being said, the Alta Audio Atom is a special speaker and I've covered other Alta Audio products in the past. I've actually reviewed the Alyssa, which is a bookshelf speaker. I'll have a link in the description below for that. And the Alec, which is a, uh, another floor standing speaker, a two-way version of this that's smaller and less expensive. So the Alyssa is in the $5,000 range, the Alec is in the $9,000 range, and then this guy sells for $17,000 in gloss piano black. And then in Rosewood and Beechwood, it's $18,000. Now I understand at this price range, this speaker is not going to be for everybody. In fact, very few people will watch this and say, oh, I didn't know about that. I'm gonna go buy it right now. I'm not oblivious to that. It's the same way when I see a Ferrari video on YouTube, I'm probably gonna watch it because I like Ferraris even though I have no intention of buying it. So hopefully you learned something new about uh, audio and this product. And if you are interested in the uh, Atom speaker, Hopefully this video helps give you an idea of what to expect from it. Now the Atom is a large and somewhat heavy speaker. It's 41 inches tall and it weighs 96 pounds per speaker. Because this has a gloss piano black finish, it ships with a nice protective velvet cover and then it also has white cotton gloves for handling it and moving it. Because of the weight of this and the size and obviously if you're picking it up with white cotton gloves, it could be a little slippery. I recommend two people handle the speaker or get a furniture dolly if you need to move it around at all. Uh, either way, it's not for someone who's going to struggle lifting something that heavy, especially because it's kind of slippery. Now, it's rated at 4 ohms. It is rated from 50 to 300 watts. I don't want to focus too much on the specs because um, those specs are available online. I'll have links in the description below. I have no, obviously, any affiliate links or kickbacks or anything with Alta Audio. I just love listening to stuff like this. So the whole video is just uh, to share my experience. I will have a link to the Alta Audio website in the description below to help you learn more about the product and, and the model. And if you have questions, you can reach out to them. Uh, but nothing uh, was exchanged as far as monetary kickbacks go or anything like that. Now, I primarily listen to the Atoms in two rooms, one being the studio that you see here uh, in this portion of the video, which has a carpeted floor. I have a no basement or anything underneath this floor. It's just concrete on the ground. It's a single story home, so it's well anchored. And that same applies to my living room. The living room did not have carpet. It had a hard floor with an area rug, less room treatment in that room. That's a much more lively room. It's also much larger and it produced very different characteristics, of course. The room makes a massive difference on how speakers sound. So I wanted to try the Atom in two different rooms and, and those are the locations I chose. As far as other locations, I did hear these at Axpona this year. I got to talk to Michael Levy, the uh, owner and founder of Alta Audio and uh, learn more about these in great extent. So as far as gear goes, now I use two amplifiers primarily. I have the PS Audio Stellar Strata that I purchased and the Vincent Audio SV228 that I reviewed recently. I reviewed both. The Strata is pure solid state, very clean, clinical, neutral sound. The SV228, because of a hybrid integrated amplifier, it has a tube on the preamp stage and it adds a little bit to the audio. I like the way it makes certain speakers sound. However, pairing wise, I found that the PS Audio Stellar Strata paired just a little bit better with the Atom, so most of my listening was on that. Now the Strata has a built-in ESS DAC, which to me worked perfectly fine. However, I did use two other devices. I have a Cambridge Audio DAC that I'll be reviewing and a Cambridge Audio Network Streamer, which worked exceptionally well. Um, so that was how I listened to digital content. As far as analog goes, I use the Music Hall MMF 3.3 uh, table, Orderphone Red cartridge, and the Vincent Audio PHO 500 Phono preamp. Now the Atom's physical design is unique, but still follows the same design language as the other Alta Audio products I reviewed uh, until you get into the Hestias and the reference series stuff above this price range. Now, Michael Levy, the owner, feels that just like a musical instrument is not a square box, he feels that speakers should not be a square box either. I'm not going to get into the whole um, rabbit hole of confirming or denying one is better than the other. It's just a different take on speaker design. There are some scientific things applied here. They've obviously uh, done a lot of research on the geometry of the speaker uh, to make it sound the way it does. Now, part of that is everything's curved. And although you may not see it in this part of the video, when I do some close-ups, 
the front panel of the speaker is actually tilted upward slightly, which is an interesting choice because ribbon tweeters tend to be a little bit more directional vertically. If you stand right above it, you lose a lot of treble extension and air. There's pros and cons to that. It's a very precise uh, imaging that you can get. So when they're dialed in well and you're in the right listening spot, they sound magical. And that's kind of how they're intended. Now, because these have spiked feet and depending on your home, you'll want to use that. There's also little discs that you put onto the spikes. So if you're putting this on a hard floor, this is again where the whole two person thing comes from. You can set them up on the spikes and extend the height of the spike slightly in the rear in case you want to angle them forward just slightly. The angle is, is minor, it's only a few degrees, but to some people, depending on where you're sitting, how high or low, you may need to do that. I left them as intended, I just leveled, uh, I basically screwed the spikes in all the way, and if I had any kind of imbalance or anything seemed weird with the floor, I would adjust it slightly. With this speaker, I didn't have to do that. The sheer weight of it resting on those spikes, it was rock solid. Now there is a pro to having a more narrow dispersion vertically when you get a ribbon tweeter like this. Um, they, because there's less energy off axis when you go very high, in a room like my living room, which I can't add a lot of room treatment to, it's a living room and the way it's designed, it would look bad if I added the room treatment that I would want to put in there to make it sound better. So one of my cheats has been using ribbon tweeters or AMTs, uh, it depends who, you know, what brand you're purchasing from. But having less energy vertically means I'm having less energy reflecting off of my ceiling, which I cannot treat, which gives me a more clean and coherent image and presentation of the music. So it's kind of like a cheat. I'm not saying that this is the answer for everything because room treatment will always make a bigger difference. But that was one benefit, and that's why the speakers that I own, I actually purchased Martin Logan's for my living room in the past because of the AMTs. It just worked better in a room like that for me. Now, the Alec and the Alyssa are two-way speakers, whereas the Atom steps up into a three-way design. So up top, you have a 3.75-inch aluminum ribbon. The mid-range speaker on this is a 5.5-inch driver, and then the, the woofer is an 8.75. The 5-inch driver can actually go down to 50 hertz and upwards of 20,000 hertz. It's a full-range speaker. Um, but they cross it over from 250 hertz to 2.25 kilohertz, whereas obviously the ribbon and the woofer take care of the frequencies aside from that. Now the woofer is aided by a couple technologies that's uh, special and proprietary to Alta Audio. One is the damp hard technology. Basically this front plate is incredibly inert. They didn't use st uh, standard MDF and they do that to eliminate enclosure resonances, which I don't have the ability to test, of course, but I, you know, doing the knock test, it does feel extremely heavy and inert. It doesn't have any kind of a ring or resonance when you hit it. That's to help, again, control the bass response. They also use something called XTL, which is their extended transmission line. So there's a whole science behind it, but they use the XTL system, the transmission line system, to finely tune the bass and the woofer's performance, just like you would tune a musical instrument when you see a brass instrument, for example. Now, just to give a brief backstory on XTL or the extended transmission line technology and what it does, when you have a tuned port and the woofer goes below resonance, it basically decouples itself. And what happens is you see your subwoofer or woofer in this case, flapping around and you're hearing very little audible output. You may hear some bass, of course, but a lot of that flapping around is just wasted energy. It's not converting that into sound. So the way this transmission line works is it's a, a, a marriage of a transmission line and a tuned port. So once the woofer goes below resonance and it decouples, that's when the, the transmission line takes over. So you have the benefits of running a tuned port and then the benefits of running a transmission line to give further bass extension down low. The end result plays into the house sound of Alta Audio. They have a very deep, rich bass, and that comes from that. Now, the other thing I want to say on this before I get into sound quality is when you have a, a well-tuned port with transmission line set up like this, you don't see a lot of movement from the woofer. You would think there's a sub somewhere because when you play this and you hear the depth and how strong the bass is and see how little the woofer is moving, that is because it's doing a more efficient job of converting those uh, notes, or I guess that motion, into sound. So 
Uh, it's a pretty amazing technology. You don't even have to know or care about how it works to appreciate it because when you turn up a loud song that has a lot of bass and you see how little it moves and the performance you get from it, that's a byproduct of that transmission line system. Now the benefit of having that transmission line system and the damp hard technology faceplate, if you will, is they don't have to use any pad fill inside. There's no dampening material. So it's literally all hard surfaces and this whole tuning system means that you're not hearing port chuffing, if you will, or that whooshing sound coming in and out of the bass port. It's really, really clean. The only noise you typically hear that I discovered is rattles in rooms that apparently weren't treated well enough because of how much bass these things put out. So now it's time to talk about sound quality, which of course, when you get to this price range, this is a very difficult thing to do um, from a purely subjective and objective state. I can't really measure these accurately because one, I don't have an anechoic chamber, and two, if I measure it, I'm measuring my room. I'm not measuring the speaker, and your system will measure, even with the same speakers and the same amp, um, it will measure completely different because you don't have the exact same room. So uh, I don't feel that's an accurate way to represent it. So what I can do is describe how they sounded in my room. And I may use a mix of analogies or any way I can translate it in, into something that is more palatable. I try not to use the whole wine connoisseur type terms um, because it's, it's like, what does that even mean? So anyway, I wanna start with some basic ideas. And I guess the furthest off the, the hinges I'll go as far as using analogies is think of the way these produce detail is like an artist using a very tiny brush to make a painting. And he paints that painting instantly and the painting is huge. You get so much at once, but there's so much level of detail and textural quality to it. Um, that, that's the first thing that stands out. You know, I have, I'm fortunate enough, so this, this is what the most helpful part of my review process was. When you get to this stuff, this level, I bring friends over, I have my family listen to stuff, I get feedback from people who are not audiophiles, um, and I'm not trying to put myself in a box with the whole audiophile terminology. I just like listening to music, and if it sounds great, it's fun. Um, some of the questions I get, you know, why does this sound so much better than mine? And my friend that asked that has speakers that were a few thousand dollars. They weren't cheap. And his system sounds great. But he was having trouble understanding of what makes it sound the way it does because it just sounds more full. Everything seems like it's more directly connected to your body. Like there's no more separation of the music in you. And what the atoms do, if you place this correctly, so I placed mine about almost 15 feet apart in my living room. They were about four feet off the wall, three and a half feet off the wall. And I towed them just slightly past my ear. So I'm shooting like two feet out from each side of my ear as far as the toe angle goes. And that gives me the sound stage that I want. And what happens is you can tell where the speakers are. You have a general sense of the position of the front two speakers. But what's really crazy is there are different notes that uh, sneak up on you, almost like picture this speaker, and then there is a bunch of little six inch drivers three feet around it, producing notes occasionally. It's not like it's this one blob image. You get these magical little notes that seem to leave the space of the speaker and come at you in ways that you're not expecting. So that's part of it. The other thing that stands out rather quickly with the Atom and even on the Alyssa and Alex speakers is the bass profile. I mentioned before that the bass is strong, it's coherent, and it's deep. These things can easily hit 30 hertz and there's tons of extension there thanks to the whole transmission line port tuning stuff. Um, so the bass isn't this harder hitting, lighter touch. It's almost like the drums are a little bit larger because it's still incredibly tight and clean, but there's so much more depth to it that you don't expect a two channel system to have that level of bass. You would think there's a subwoofer somewhere. So for people who don't like that deeper bass, maybe that's a little bit too strong for them. It is more bass forward. If you wanna reduce some of the bass, we'll pull it off the wall or even lift the speaker higher off the ground and doing so can reduce some of that. Of course, there's DSP, but I love the sound profile of these because admittedly, some things, there's a couple of genres that stood out to me that completely blew me away. Now, I have the whole audiophile playlist thing. You know, I do tons of my same demo tracks that I do on headphones and speakers. 
stuff that I'm intimately familiar with because I want to hear how these speakers sound compared to other gear. Um, it helps. But I also still just listen to music just to listen to music because I don't want to lose sight of what this is all about. And that's the music. And there's everyone, I think a lot of people in the audiophile side as well, but people in general are familiar with Daft Punk. And they re-released Random Access Memories this year. There's a 10th anniversary edition. I bought it on vinyl. It's a 180 gram press. I already mentioned my phono uh, preamp and turntable setup earlier. But that that is probably one of the best sounding records I have ever heard on my system. And just by a stroke of luck and having all these things combined, I had these speakers the same time I got the record and it just blew me away. And one song, uh, Motherboard, it showcases so many things the, the Atom does well in one track because that song has some really deep bass, but it also has these swooping uh, bass lines. It has string instruments. It has digital synths. It's imaging all over the place. And it's just such a magical thing that I was completely taken by. You know, it's I love listening to records because you're not changing tracks. You just put it on and you, you sit and you enjoy the album. And it was a surreal experience listening to it thanks to the way that bass note uh, is produced. Now, with that being said, I kind of alluded, I had a, um, I don't want to call it a dirty little secret, but I've just really been enjoying listening to EDM and even some trap music on these because the bass is so intoxicating. It's just so damn good. Everything else sounds great. Listening to jazz sounds great. Listening to vocals with good jazz music or um, even a pop singer, uh, the vocal quality is incredible. Now, there's a lot of things going on. I'll, I'll talk about more. But there's just something about the way certain electronic songs sounded on this that I've never heard a high-end speaker do. One example is a song called S.O.S. from uh, Jaws, Zed's Dead, and Nicole Miller. Um, there's a part of the song right about the two-minute mark, and I played this song for almost everyone I demoed these speakers to, and I never said anything about it. I just played it. And every time when that one part happened just over the two-minute mark, I think it's like 203 or 205, I always saw a reaction in people's faces because there's so, such a sense of power, almost like these speakers are some massive caged beast that's being restrained just enough to not be like out of control. You can sense how much power and capability they have even when you're not blasting it. And that's what stands out with speakers like these is you don't have to turn it up really loud to still appreciate the power and um, intimacy and connection to the music they just they connect to your body in a way that not a lot of speakers do now expanding further when i got into hard rock you know i listen to chevelle sometimes i listen to tons of stuff but even like chevelle and corn those are fast loud high energy rock songs they're not produced for like audio files or whatever but damn are they fun to listen to and again with that deeper bass they were a blast the Adams have a way of bringing out string instruments and guitars with enough energy to i don't want to say be in your face but be extremely present without being abrasive or too over the top. There's no knife edge to it that's making it where you almost wince at higher volumes, but at the same time, there's nothing you feel that's missing from the energy of that. Now, the, the Atom speakers and Alta speakers in general are voiced better for th uh, artists like Leonard Cohen or Melody Gardot. They seem to be suited extremely well to the vocal tonality of those types of singers. Um, but they also play well, again, I mentioned for pop and, and it's it's kind of like, I don't want to say a jack of all trades because the follow up to that is master at none. But when you get to this level, it's just applying its special sauce to everything you listen to. And if you like that special sauce, you're going to seriously enjoy a ton of music. The crossover system on these are impeccable. And even when I listened to the two-way system, I was shocked at how well the crossover handled the blend between the two. This is even better because now you're getting more nuances in every octave. But at the same time, if you take a step back, you can't tell you know, which uh, driver is doing what. As long as you're at least several feet away, the blend is extremely cohesive. Now I touched on crossovers and how this kind of steps up with the whole layering and textural differences from the Alec and the Alyssa. Just on this note, because I did spend some time listening to the Hestia, um, the new Titanium Hestia 2s, those are about $40,000 a pair. And 
this they scale with price very well. You know, you hear the Alyssa, and in a smaller room, the Alyssa is magic. I loved it in my office because my old office was uh, smaller than this one. The Alec just takes it up a notch. It's more punchy. It has a lot more power handling capability. And then the Atom is dialing up the power handling more, but it's just sounding fuller and larger, uh, even at the same volume. It just seems like it's doing more with the music and you're missing less. Then you get to the Hestia. And the weirdest thing with the Hestia is I heard vertical soundstage more than I have on almost any speaker I've ever auditioned. I've heard like $200,000 speakers. The Hestia has a really magical imaging presentation. Um, but even at lower volumes, you can almost still feel the music without it being loud. There's almost like some kind of direct link from the speaker to your body. And that makes it a little bit more visceral. And that's kind of what you're paying for when you get to that level. However, if you hear a speaker like this, which I suggest trying to do if you can, you're not going to feel like this is missing out on that. The whole goal of this is to recreate the live uh, music in your home. That's like the core philosophy of Alta Audio. And that leads me to my favorite listening moment in years is I was playing music. I don't often tell anyone what I'm doing. I just, you know, if my wife's listening and my friends, whatever, I, I put music on. My wife said, cue the drum roll. It sounds like you're actually there. I, and to tell you I was excited, and I love my wife, okay? She is not an audiophile. She is not into this side of things. She just listens to music. I've come home and she's just listening to an Alexa speaker, even though I've put that there to help control my <laughs> higher end sound system. So she's happy with whatever. But when I put on a song, and it was um, Trouble's What You're In by uh, Fink, and I'll put, I'll have a picture on the screen here. It was recorded, I think it was, it was in London in like 2011 or something like that, uh, live performance. I just put it on and she dropped that bombshell on me. And I kind of ruined the moment because I paused it for a second. I'm like, are you kidding? Because, you know, sounds like you're there. After I talked to Michael and he said, I'm trying to make it so it sounds like you're there. Blew me away. That is the biggest compliment I could ever have expected from my wife to say for someone who doesn't care about the way things sound as much. She has her hobbies. I love you if you're watching this, honey. I have mine and she supports that. Uh, but that was really exciting for me. So that is the magic sauce. And by chasing that reproduction of music, this is not going to be the sound profile for every single person out there. They have their own unique way of presenting the music. Like I said, it's bass forward. It's not gonna measure completely flat. It's not designed to. Uh, if you're ever at an area where there's an audio show like Expona or if you're going um, to Munich, there, there's all, and smaller shows in between, of course. But I strongly suggest trying to listen to these, but at least reach out to them if you have questions and they can explain it more because um, it's, it's very special when you hear a system like this. So that about wraps up the review. I know the speaker is not for everybody out there. I'm not oblivious to that, but I hope you learned something new about Alta Audio as a company. This particular speaker, and I guess... Um, just something important about audio is the memories and experiences you get from listening to music, movies, playing games, whatever it is. It's more about the experience. And on a system like this, you're making those memories all the time. Even when I listen to music that I used to listen to on a Walkman when I was younger, that stuff can still surprise you when you hear it on a system like this. And that's what makes these types of speakers and equipment special is wowing you and surprising you not just on day one two years later you put on a song you hadn't heard in forever and you're just completely captivated by it and that's what i love about high-end sound equipment um or even just a good product in general it doesn't have to be really expensive it's more about those experiences and memories and the atom is something that i can confidently say is always going to deliver those for you it really is a special speaker so I'll have a link in the description below, like I said, to learn more and take you directly to their site. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I'd love to see you in a future video. I cover everything from gaming to audiophile stuff. With that being said, thank you so much for the support, and I'll see you next time. Bye.